Now you can go about any order you want on uh, thinning the cape down. We are going to, there's a few areas that you need to make sure that you thin down. Because of the fact this is an aggressive open mouth bear, we're going to want to show wrinkles in the back of the nose so the skin underneath where we're going to want the detail of those wrinkles in, we need to make sure that we thin those down. The order you go in is up to you. Uh, I don't like if I can get this on the mannequin without splitting it in the back, I like to go ahead and leave it completely whole. That'll save you some time as far as uh, sewing goes. And usually I'll just start at the muzzle, work my way back. It's critical, um, once again, to determine if we're not going to use these lips, we, we don't have to go to the extent of splitting and thinning it down, but we do have to thin the area around the opening of that mouth. Uh, and I prefer to do it with a flat razor blade. And it's just a matter of coming in here and removing a lot of the excess skin and flesh that's on this hide that wasn't taken off at the tannery. And oftentimes the tannery won't thin this area down and you'll have to do it yourself. So any of the big bulky spots on the skin, we'll just take and thin that down. And we're just about going to the hair follicles but we're not going to be cutting any holes in it, hopefully. And we'll go ahead and split this lip all the way. Now, for the sake of demonstrating how to use the actual lip on a mannequin. We've thinned down our entire muzzle area around that lip and I've gone ahead and split this outer lip all the way. Now as we're working our way back to the ears, we've inverted this through the mouth opening. Uh, once again, we are trying to avoid cutting anything down through the back. We're going to try to get this whole thing mounted without actually having to cut a hole in it. It does get a little bit tight in here. We're going to take and invert the ear cartilage and what we're going to do is take a skinning knife and we're going to work our way along the edge and get that ear turned all the way around uh, from top to bottom. And then what we're going to do is take and put a small incision across about midway up on that cartilage, skin the upper portion, and we'll retain that skin. We're using the Bill Lancaster 3D ear liners. That's just a phenomenal ear liner, but we need to make sure that we transfer the information that we glean from the cartilage onto this because a lot of times it may just be a little bit off as far as size goes so we'll make sure that we retain the cartilage and double check them against the ear liners that we're going to be using. So we'll go ahead and get this ear turned all the way and all I'm doing is going along the edge of that ear making sure that we've got it completely out to the edge And it is imperative that you get every bit of cartilage out of this ear because if not, when you slide that ear liner in there, you'll hit a spot where you've got excessive cartilage in there. We know for a fact that this is coming off the left ear, so we want to grab our left ear liner and we'll take and transfer this information right over to that ear. And what we'll do is we'll mark exactly where we need to take and trim that ear liner. Take a grinder and I'm just going to take and remove that excess material that we've got on this 3D ear liner. Test fit it on this ear to see how our size is. things you're looking for here is that the edge of that ear when lined up should give you plenty of slack down on the inside of that ear. So in other words once that's pulled all the way down line up our edges. Now we've taken our ears we've trimmed them down test fit them. I've also taken and sanded this uh, leading edge down all the way around so that it comes out. Okay, we've got our cape completely ready to go on the mount. The next thing we're going to do is move on to the mannequin. The first thing that we're going to do is 
attach the replacement nose. What we're going to do is stencil onto the mannequin exactly what needs to come off and then we'll cut the nose off of the mannequin and mount the reproduction nose to it. And we'll remove the nose. And we want to test a couple of things. And it looks like everything's going to line up pretty good on this. Now we'll start dead center at the bottom of the nose. And all we're going to do is take and put just a little tack right here. And I like to use a small, very small riffler file that I can use to manipulate that skin to be the exact same thickness as the reproduction nose. And we will have to come back in and fill just a little bit of it with our magic sculpt when we do our finishing. Now that we've got the top of that nose set and the nose is done. Now we've got the entire skin around the artificial nose is secured. Next step is to go to the lip. And we'll just take and drop that skin and tuck that right into our lip line. And we'll secure our upper lip. Now, once you've determined these three points, and actually the fourth point will be this other corner of the mouth, then we know that we've got to take and manipulate this skin into that slot in the existing space that we have. So it's just a matter of manipulating that, and as I go along on the bottom, sometimes I'll take and put a little bit of super glue to help hold it. If not, I can just take and tuck along our epoxy that's resting just under the surface of that skin. What we can do is take that epoxy, work it up, and help lock, lock that lip right into that slot and create the exact same depth as the artificial lip that we've sculpted. Now just as we did on the bottom lip, we want to take our epoxy, work it along that lip line. This will give us a little bit more fullness to those lips and lock it in on that slot. Just a nice thin layer over all of the mannequin that hasn't already got it. Doesn't take more than about a sixteenth of an inch hide paste to secure that skin down to that mannequin. Hey, we've got our hide paste all the way around on our shoulder. And we'll go ahead and secure that brisket area with staples. additional air that you might have trapped underneath that skin, you can work off at this point in time or work out of there. 